Okay, so before I dive into this tutorial, don't these little sisal bushes look great? You know, these are so cheap to make. I mean, if you don't mind putting the time in, a couple hours each evening spread out over a week or two, uh, you know, you're missing out because these will save you a lot of money and you can make as many as you want. Uh, they work fantastic in any scale. I mean, they can be little trees for N scale. Uh, trees for HO or bushes, O scale, uh, 135th scale. They're just, they turn out fantastic. You can choose to paint them. You can spray bomb them, airbrush them, flock them of your choice. Uh, all with like a pieces of sisal rope, some 12 millimeter static grass, the flocking of your choice, and some adhesive like carpenter glue diluted 50-50, or I prefer matte medium. But I'm going to show you how to make these, and they are great. So I'm sure these have been done before. Uh, this is just a sizal chunk, right? Cheap rope, hay bale rope, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, sizal is another name for it. And I just dip the end. I cut these one inch, two inch, whatever, and dip it in matte medium, thinned matte medium. Just soak it up to there, about a quarter inch, and then let them dry overnight on a piece of wax paper. And then the next morning, I just take them. They're quite thick still, right? So I just, you know, rip them apart and then display them out. Then you can re-dip re them just to stiffen them up more if you want. And then I'll flock those with static grass again, right? And then airbrush them, paint them and make a really nice small bush. Okay. So these little sizal sections cut, sealed up with a bit of uh, matte medium dipped in previously and then I just tease these out. I got about a hundred of them there. So I just play around with them, tease them out. Take some 50-50 water matte medium diluted. Like this. Twelve mil static grass. Nice little bush, or for end scale, they're nice little fruit trees or deciduous trees. Okay, so I call this massaging the bush or massaging the sisal. Like there's been a layer of, a couple of layers. You know, you dip, dip in the carpenter's glue I just used in this case, which you can also use instead of matte medium. Okay. And I find that when you massage it, like you save a lot, you recover most of the, the fibers and then you end up with a, a decent branch structure to paint. Okay, so I take my sisal that have been massaged. In this case, they've had a couple applications of 12 mil uh, dipped in the carpenter glue solution. Patience is the game in this, you know, you end up with a nice bush. So I end up with one like that, a bit straggly looking, but would still look pretty good if you painted that up first. Just see all this 12 mil. I like to see the 12 mil and the 7 mil as branch structure. Uh, anything smaller than that, uh, like 4 mil and 2 mil and foam and super leaf and all that other stuff and the knock leaves as the leaves that go on later. So I paint them. 
and do the branch structure first very dark almost like that shadow light technique you know that I talk about so you can see there that that's a little bit straggly so then what I do with that is is I take that now that's had two applications of of um, 12 mil on the sisal okay and it's quite rigid now uh, although it's flexible and I can shape it and move each branch structure and so on okay so then I dip that again in the yogurt cup with 50-50 carpenter glue and water and then I, I, I just sprinkle on 7 mil so it looks like this right, underneath there and then once this is dry then I just take this and I just massage this basically just like I do the other ones just knock all the stuff that would normally shed uh, taking the time to do this means it doesn't shed it on your layout right so when you vacuum so you don't need to vacuum as much a lot of times you know people you know oh, why don't you just spray the thing and be done with it and sprinkle it yeah well have you visited the bush lately and just see what happens like just touch them and they fall apart right this way when they're soaked multiple times they become hard scenery like all the scenery on my layout because I take the extra time to soak with matte medium and 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 to do the process I can lean on it like I lean across it all the time and 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 bump it uh, if the trees get bent their wire I just straighten them like they can handle abuse right and when you're building a small layout you know the one of your dreams or your retirement you know you want it to be robust and to hold up so there's a that's the amount that comes off it see that gets recovered for other applications and then you can see there that's quite a nice bush I mean it's almost in some ways ready for flocking just like that if you want but I like to paint them again so they have depth and shadow okay so here's one that I flocked with uh, four mil as well okay and you can see the difference the finer limb structure there see see the whole point of this exercise is not to say oh look this method this is the best method or this is a great method for making bushes it's the process I want to encourage people to experiment and 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 get into it that way you'll discover your own little techniques and you know like your own method that you like to do right but it's through process and layers that you actually learn how to make great scenery that's how it's done right it's not just oh I'll do ABC and be done with it it's like go out on your own and try stuff right get the materials on hand and play around and try different combinations uh, and you surprise yourself you know okay Okay, so here's a larger one, right? All I did was cut a longer piece of sisal rope, right? When I spun it, or cut it, and then just opened it up and frayed it out. Like, it, and just seal the bottom first, remember? So the trunk, and then look at this. Like, um, I can tease this out. Uh, this has had two applications of 12 mil and an application of seven. And uh, you can see once it gets massaged out and teased out. It's a nice tree, isn't it? And you can flock it with whatever leaves you want. Okay, so the paint phase, painting the tree armature, or in this case, branch structure. Now, um, to introduce shadow, light, depth, illusion, right? So I'm going to start with some very dark brown.
umber. And I'm just going to airbrush underneath mostly. establish some of that shadow. Once again the beauty of an airbrush and acrylic fast drying paint is you can paint fibers. The top I'm going to do a lighter brown. Okay. These will probably be limbs for my cottonwoods. Okay, so here's some other highlight colors I like to use. Earth Tone. So Dark Yellow XF88, Buff XF57, Deck Tan XF55. These are all compatible colors in a broad range. Like for example, like if you want to get that straw grass or highlight of umber colors, I go to these three or a derivative of them, a variation of them. Um, that's up to each individual. I like this little bit of yellow sometimes depending, but I probably won't use it in this case for these small bushes and limbs um, but I'm going to probably use deck tan and buff and the buff is really nice uh, for a highlight for earth uh, the deck tan has a little more gray it's a more pale version of this so I usually use deck tan as a final highlight believe it or not and then I'll go to even shades of white after this okay so these are really important colors to have if you're into scenery painting right earth Okay, as I mentioned before, um, so Flat Earth XF52, and then the brown JGSDF XF72, like these four colors would do it for me, see? Okay, They're just a really good color. And then, of course, there's the umber, which I use, you know, I just use flat black. That's the Canadian National Main Line down the street. This is just 50 50 flat black and any brown, really. Okay. That'll cover all your ground shades. So this is the brand new bottle and you can see when you open it you go my goodness where's the paint this one seems a little bit lower than normal but anyway it's all in there and it goes a long ways like I say when you start thinning it down I can make four bottles out of this so I'm going to start with a little bit I got this empty bottle here and what I'm going to do is uh, take some of this And just put in a little bit of a portion in there. IPA. You'll find that IPA separates from the pigment when it sits on the shelf for a while too. But that's okay. Just shake it up again and she'll suspend and work just fine. Never had a problem all the years that I've used it. I've heard somebody say, oh, it's not the same richness of color if you don't use the, the proper one, hogwash. <laughs> Never noticed any difference, ever. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this. And let's grab one of these. I'm just going to highlight the top of this. Okay. 
going to hit the top of it. Just like that. Leave the back dark and other side darker. Okay. okay, so time to do some flocking. So I have this uh, really cool little book here. I've used it before. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, it's called the Tree Book. Learning to Recognize Trees of British Columbia. And uh, it's a fantastic little sort of uh, benchtop book, you know, for doing this kind of thing. It was published by Roberta Parrish in 1948. And it was reissued, I believe, in 1961. You can still find it, though. The Tree Book, Learning to Recognize Trees of British Columbia. Anyway, so I have these little brush, you know, tree armatures built up. Uh, quite a few of them now. It feels kind of nice. They're all painted and now I can have some fun flocking. Um, I have, you know, like super leaf here. I have some knock. You know, they make nice leaves. And, you know, just uh, Woodland Scenics foam and so on. And I also have this here too and I don't like, know where I got it from. It was back in my museum days. Um, the owner, he knew how to find stuff, you know, anywhere in the world. But it, like each leaf, like it's dark on one side and light on the other. So where he picked it up, I do not know. Only I have a little bit of this precious leaf material left. So I'm going to try a little bit of that. And the three sort of samples I'm going to sort of inspire or use for inspiration are these ones, uh, the black hawthorn, which is found from sea level to mid elevations along water courses, meadowland thickets, etc. Oval leaves, uh, tells you, you know, has white flowers and so on, which is kind of cool. It shows you in British Columbia where they grow. So I'm down in the far left corner here, right? <laughs> so, um, and then there's this ca cascara and it's, um, it is found on the southern part of the coast and Vancouver Island and in scattered locations in the Columbia Valley in the interior. So once again, that's something, you know, that, uh, it, you know, these little armatures and bushes will represent. Okay. And then there's the good old Pacific crab apple. These are everywhere, these trees. I see them all over the place. And they are found on lake sides and stream banks along the coast from sea level to mid elevations. So, and they have white flowers um, on them in April, June. So, there's three good samples, uh, you know, generically. I mean, I don't know what they will be, you know, specifically, but, you know, NHO scale, it's sort of a generic approach to things. But it's nice to have an idea. And uh, these I'm going to use to dress the barren part of the riverbank, just in behind the barge slip. And I'm going to do that before I install the barge slip, obviously. I'm at that point now, so I should have a little bit of fun flocking these. We'll have a look, okay? The nice thing about matte medium is it doesn't dry brittle, it stays kind of rubbery and it's really good adhesive for paper and and like uh, fiber, oh it's so great and it, you'll never get any sheen from it, it dries dead flat and um, it's just great for doing this for flocking I like if you like to do it by hand like this. And why not? Let's model the trees too, right? That looks pretty nice. I like that. It, it's it's not too saturated, you know. Once again, I really like that desaturated look because by the time you put lights on it, and if you do put lighter green as a highlight, like lesser. You know, around them, it, it just seems to uh, reconcile better with the scenery in my experience. 
So that's a nice looking little bush too. I like that. Boy, I wish I had more of this. Jeez. I've got, like, look at this. I stuck it in here. I got a little bit, you know. It's like gold dust to me, this stuff. I think I'm going to use this particular flock for this tree. I really like this tree. I wish I made some more larger ones of these. I just was sort of playing around and uh, you know I cut the size a longer. I wish I would have made some more of these. I really like this tree. So anyway I'm gonna use this for uh, a good sample uh, because of its size. I'll show you how I like to just do things by hand here. I just can and more control I want to model a bush like this. This one will probably be in the foreground somewhere. So we'll just do this part and then see what it looks like. Big old crab apple tree. Eh? See how the glue just gets the end of the fibers, I like the branches? And we don't want to flood the whole bush with uh, glue and, and, you know, flock, right? This is where one tree will stand out. you that just the difference as you see there you can mix up the color too if you want I don't want to do that with this one though I think I want to keep this one the way it is like that and just add some more back here but boy I really like that You know, the beauty of uh, treating each bush or tree as a model, as a separate component on a smaller layout where you spend more time and effort on details that support your concept of the railroad. Um, you know, for me, it's where I'm standing, you know, what I see. And it's usually, um, you know, uh, just a location where you can only see so far. I can't see more than couple of hundred yards either way I see a switcher coming around the corner with a hopper or something and all that scenery is what really impacts me in the moment and it's a lot like that with uh, the small shelf layout you know the idea that that you're modeling the area that that you know you're impressed with at the time and uh, It does the same, like it has the same effect. Notice how the gnarly, like the really gnarly sort of bushes, like they're all different, right? You saw it, but I really like these gnarly ones, like, uh, where's another one here? Uh, here's one. See that? Just a little bit of work, right? And you pound off 20 or 30 of these and you can spread them out and uh, they'll go a long ways, you know? You know what I mean? I mean, they could be anything. They could be crab apple trees. They could be, you could turn them into blackberry. You know, they can be fruit trees. You know, they really, really make it effective, don't they? Like when you think about it. <laughs> 